Here to wake up the sleeping giant inside of you is Steve Klein. Well, thanks, Vicki. What an audience. Thanks for coming. I'm your host, Steve Klein, and today we're going to talk about leadership and motivation. Uh, what does it take to become a leader? Well, we talked a little bit about that in the last program. We'll talk a lot more about it in this and the next few programs. But one of the key areas of leadership is motivation. It's, it's that drive to do something. There's a number of definitions of motivation. Motivation is an emotional commitment to a positive action. A lot of words in there, but it's focusing on having some positive action and committing to it. Secondly, it's goal-directed action. So you can be motivated to do something, but if you're not focused on where you want to go, there's no plan involved. You're not focused on the way you should be doing it. And third, it's a desire held in expectation with the belief that it will be realized. But you need to remember, you motivate individuals, you inspire groups. Now, most of you as managers have meetings with your people on a regular basis. This is when you are motivating them to do better, to sell better, to do more. But you need to remember that that is where you're inspiring your people. The true motivation comes from finding out what your people want, helping them understand they can make those things happen, and then helping them get that. And that's on a one-to-one -one basis. You motivate people by focusing on their goals. Now, all of you have goals for yourself and for your dealership. The one key area that we'll be talking about over the next few weeks is that you can't give someone else a goal. You can help them develop an objective, an aim, but they have to develop their own goals. Now, there are three ways to use motivation with your sales force. The first kind of motivation is called incentive motivation. Now, we've all heard of incentives before. It can be a number of different things. Incentives are based on reward, giving you something for doing something. Let me give you an example. Uh, it might be a parking place if it's an office building where there's not a lot of close parking. It might be an extra day off. It might be a spiff of some kind. It's giving you something for doing something. Now, there are some drawbacks to incentive motivation. And those drawbacks have to do with keeping you focused on what you want to be accomplishing. Let me give you an example. Uh, let's say, I'll take a little, um, oh, let's say not little, but a 10-year-old boy. Now, you tell your 10-year-old son on Saturday to clean his room. And if you've had uh, children before, you know the 10-year-old boys generally don't keep the room as clean as, they should, as it should be. But you tell your son that when you clean your room, we're going to take you to Baskin, I, uh, Baskin Robbins ice cream for any kind of uh, uh, flavor you want. Well, the son goes and cleans his room up and says, let's go to Baskin Robbins. And you go over there and you get him his ice cream cone. Next Saturday, do you think the room is clean or messy? Well, you're right, it's probably messy again. See, behavior hasn't changed with incentive motivation. You give things to people, but they go back to where they want to be. Now your son says, when you tell him to clean his room, do I get two scoops this time? So what happens with incentives is it starts getting bigger and bigger in terms of what it needs to be. So you need to help people focus on where they want to be to help them change. A lot of times you're focused on giving people incentives only because you have to have a quick response to increasing sales. But true motivation comes over a period of time. Now let's talk about the second form of motivation, and that's fear motivation. Fear motivation is based on punishment and loss. Let me give you an example. Uh, what's the earliest form of fear we hear as children? We're about so high. If you remember, it was wait till your father gets home. Now, it wasn't so much the punishment that got you. It was that wait for the punishment. Because once you're punished, once you're spanked, once you're fired, whatever the fear is, this could be because of fear of losing your job, fear of failure, uh, fear of the boss. See, once you lose what you thought you were losing, there, there's no fear there any, anymore. It's over with. And the same with incentive motivation. Both work because they're quick fixes. Now, the drawbacks of both of them are that they're temporary and they're external. There's a time limit on the incentive there's a time limit on the fear, and they're external in terms that someone else is doing it to you. Now, the third key form of motivation, the one that really, truly works the best, is called attitude motivation. Attitude motivation is based on change. It's the way we think. 
The drawback to attitude motivation is that it takes a while. And a lot of us in our dealerships don't have the time to wait three, four, five months to have something uh, happen to increase sales. Now, it works because it's permanent and it's internal. Again, it takes time to make those things happen. And with that, we need to take a short break and we'll come back.